Do you need two heat pumps? One for your hydronic heating and one for your tap hot water? Or can you just use one? Because after all, they are heat pumps. I'm Phil from Euroheat and today I'll give you a short explanation of the options and uh, maybe the pros and cons of each and which way you should go. It is possible to use one heat pump to do both jobs. Now, the difference between a, a hydronic heat pump and a domestic hot water, like a tap hot water heat pump, is the capacity. So the uh, domestic hot water heat pumps that you have for your tap hot water, for your showers and your kitchen sink and your bathroom, they're usually a small compressor, which might have an output of 1.5 kilowatts, and then there's a big tank underneath, or maybe the tank is even separate. But they work, they have these small um, heat pumps that work <clears throat> for a longer period of time, with a small output and they slowly heat up this tank. Now the uh, hydronic heat pumps, they work a bit differently where they're designed to produce a lot more heat instantly in a short amount of time. And the reason is because your heating load for your house is generally much bigger than the hot water load. You might use four, five, six, up to say 20 kilowatt hours of domestic hot water heat uh, but for the heat pump for your hydronic heating, you might use 10, 20, 30 kilowatts every hour. So you can see there's a big difference between the output. So that what that means is you definitely can't use your domestic hot water heat pump for your hydronic heating. There's just not enough space. There's also you know, regulations about mixing you know, tap water with heating water and stuff like that. We won't go into that. Look, you could theoretically heat one tiny small room with your um, domestic hot water heat pump. You know, it might be 10 square meters or even less, but it would do a pretty bad job because they're not even made for the low temperatures that hydronic heating systems are made, uh, are designed for. So uh, for hydronic heating, you're looking at 30, 35 degrees for floor heating, maybe 45 to 55 degrees for radiators. But for uh, domestic hot water, you're looking at a minimum of 60, often 65, sometimes up to 70 if you're really trying to store some energy in your hot water tank. So can we use the hydronic heat pump if it's got all of this capacity and this output? Can we use the hydronic heat pump for your domestic hot water? And the answer is yes, we definitely can. We just put a tank, uh, a storage tank, and it's got a special heat exchange coil in it. And that way we can send hot water through that heat exchange coil and it indirectly heats the volume of water in the tank, which is then your shower water or your uh, kitchen sink water or bathroom water. And so that works great. The water doesn't mix, so it's fine with the regulations. The heat pump does a pretty good job at it. Sure, the efficiency drops, but it's the same efficiency at the end of the day as the uh, domestic hot water heat pump. But here's the complication. The tanks that are used uh, usually come from Europe. You can get ones that are uh, not made in Europe and they can be put outside. Uh, we don't usually like the quality of those tanks. They don't seem to last all that long. So the good quality ones that come from Europe, they're usually made to be inside because in Europe, that's where they put all their stuff. They don't have um, tanks and stuff outside like we do in Australia because it's so cold over there, the energy would just be lost so quickly. So they have it in their basements or in their laundries. And so if you get one of these good quality tanks, which can be connected to the hydronic heat pump for your domestic hot water, uh, it, that good quality tank needs to be positioned inside. So it needs to be in the laundry, in a cupboard perhaps, or in the plant room, or in the basement garage, somewhere like that. And it's perfectly possible, it's fine, it's done all of the time. But here's the catch, and it's counterintuitive. We've already got the heat pump there, and you think that's the main part. But because uh, we have to get this special tank and then there's some temperature sensors and pumps and valves and you know someone has to go and install it and put it together. So there's all this time spent. It's actually more expensive to do it this integrated way. So yes, we can do it and we recommend it for people that uh, are really watching the energy consumption like an off-grid house because we can control everything really well if it's just one machine. But for your everyday house, like you can see here, uh, the here there's actually two heat pumps. So the big one there, that's the one with all the capacity, that's the hydronic heat pump. And then the tall one behind the tree, that is the domestic hot water heat pump. It has the little heat pump in there and the tank of water underneath, and it slowly works during the day to get that tank of water to temperature so it can be drawn down on 
during the night or in the morning. Now the whether you have the special tank from Europe which connects to the hydronic heat pump or you have the standalone tank which only does the domestic hot water heating they both take up a similar footprint right so there's not much of a difference there but the flexibility with the standalone domestic hot water heat pump is it can be outside or it can be inside so when I say inside it can be in a garage um, different manufacturers have different stipulations but usually they ask for something like 14 15 cubic meters of volume so the heat pump can draw the a little bit of heat out of the air there without it affecting the temperature too much of let's say the garage or um, the, the basement and uh, it can still work well but the biggest difference is the cost and it's not a absolutely huge difference actually i take that back it can be <laughs> it can be a pretty big difference and the reason is that first of all the domestic hot water heat pumps are mass produced so they've got the efficiencies of scale they've brought the cost down whereas those specialized tanks they're a bit of a specialty so they have the specialty price tag attached with it but with the standalone domestic hot water heat pumps the australian government actually gives rebates stcs you might have heard about those so that's the federal rebate scheme and then the various states have also other uh, rebates that you can claim uh, where we are in Perth unfortunately we don't get as many rebates as in Victoria and New South Wales uh, but we've got the better weather so we'll keep that so if you're looking for the most economical solution the standalone system having two separate systems that's the best way to go and to recap if you're looking for a system where you might have an off-grid house or you're really watching your energy your power consumption an integrated system where you have the hydronic heat pump and the specialty tank inside that is the better option for you so if you need help with your hydronic heating or your domestic hot water needs or maybe for a apartment building um, please do give us a call at Euroheat we've been making uh, making videos a long time but <laughs> producing uh, designing and installing hydronic heating and domestic hot water systems for 30 years and we'd be really happy to help you, you with yours too.